What makes for good video game music? I'm sure you have a favorite game soundtrack, and chances are that you like it because it's just good music. But games are interactive, and the music we hear in them changes as we play. Just as important as the quality of the music is the way that that music is implemented. For that reason, I want to talk about the music of Portal 2, and why it's my favorite game soundtrack of all time. Every game has some form of dynamic music, but rarely does this go beyond different music in different areas or special combat music. Which is cool and all, but the real interesting stuff is when the music is made to fit perfectly with whatever's going on, and that's exactly what Portal 2 does. Probably the most cited example of this is in Test Chamber 20, where you have to activate three laser receivers and each one plays a track. There are much more complex examples of dynamic music, like Test Chamber 10. This chamber alone has 16 different music tracks devoted to it, and each has a different purpose. First we have this bass layer that loops the whole time you're in the chamber. Then we have another loop layered on top when you get near the first cube. When you pick up the cube, that loop stops and the short bit is played. When you activate the first laser receiver, you get another loop layered on top which is randomly selected from two options. Even more parts are added as you or the cube fling through the air. When you activate the second laser receiver, you get yet another layer which is randomized between three loops. As you ricochet through the test chamber, you can hear a bunch of these different loops playing together, creating a nice musical reward for completing the puzzle. This is one test chamber, and we have instances of music being added vertically, horizontally, and even some randomness as well. This is all really cool, but it's not really anything that hasn't been seen before. Plenty of games have dynamic soundtracks. Of course, Portal 2 does it really well, but if this was all, then I wouldn't be making a whole video on it. To get into what makes Portal 2 really interesting, we have to talk about diegetic music. To start, Non-diegetic music is essentially any music that accompanies a movie or a game and is being played purely for the audience. The music isn't actually being played inside the universe of the movie or game, and none of the characters in it are really hearing it. For example, when you hear a grand orchestral piece in a movie, most likely the characters aren't actually hearing an orchestra blaring. That music is only there for the audience's enjoyment. On the flip side, diegetic music is music that is being played in the universe, like a radio or an actual orchestra playing something in the movie or game. We can do some really interesting stuff with this idea. Going back to Portal 2, notice that almost all of the loops from the previous example are tied to certain objects, like laser receivers or cubes. The tracks for these are only audible in a certain range around these objects. Along with being dynamic, these tracks are spatial as well. They emanate from a specific location in the game world, and this is true for every use of dynamic music for test objects. Lasers, faceplates, and basically everything else have some sort of music emanating from them, as long as there's music playing at all. The reason for this is that Portal 2's soundtrack was composed with the idea of it being entirely diegetic. This is why all of those different tracks play from points in space. They're being made by the test elements themselves. They essentially act as sound effects, and the sound design backs that up. The lasers use harsh synths that sound like, well, lasers. The aerial faith plates have a gritty, percussive sound to them. Blue Jail arpeggiates the music, giving a feeling of upward motion. Orange Jail subdivides the music, making it feel sped up and faster.
and all these sounds are completely consistent across the whole game. I'm not just speculating either, there's a reason the soundtrack is credited to the Aperture Science Psychoacoustic Laboratories, and it's not because they didn't want to credit the original artist. The composer, Mike Baraski, made this decision intentionally because it's how he composed the soundtrack. Even the more traditional sound effects in this game have a musical quality to them, contributing to the idea that the whole of Aperture is creating all the sounds and music. This isn't even limited to test objects. You can hear Ratman's crazed ramblings literally coming from the walls. The backing track here is also spatial, coming from around the center of the room, so as you make your way through the area it gradually fades out naturally. Or here where you can hear music playing from the laser cutters on this conveyor belt. This way! Here's an interesting story, you might like this. I almost got a job down here in manufacturing, but uh, guess who the foreman went with? Only an exact duplicate of himself, nepotism. There's a lot more I could talk about, like the game's use of leitmotifs and the instrumentation, and I actually had a whole section written out before writing into the small problem that I know almost nothing about music theory. But I hope I managed to show a more unique, less talked about side of the soundtrack. Video game music can be good on its own, thematically appropriate, and whatever else, but at the end of the day it's part of a larger work that involves interaction and lots of other audio. Portal 2 goes the extra mile in bringing it all together, and I think the result is worth it.